Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Walking Through Glass, the podcast with your host, Dr. Dina C. Brown. Yes, I'm excited. I have Desiree Clay on the ones and twos with me today. And um, I get so, I'm so excited that I don't even know like what to say, what to do next, because I'm still kind of a little, got a little shoulder pop going on. I love my theme music. I do too. I was over here like, okay, wait a minute. The <laughs> movie's about to start jamming out. Wait. <laughs> I sit there and sometimes just kind of play it. And and we think about like the languaging and we think about our personal branding. And when I went to um the artist to create it for me, and I was talking to her, I said, This is what I'm looking for. And I said, I want that edge where people want to dance. It makes you kind of want to dance and but it still captures the essence of who, you know, I do. And I said, you know, again, I have one major purpose in line to my mission in life, right? And as I'm going to tell y'all how Desiree helped me switch it around a little bit, <laughs> it's actually transform, inspire, and empower. And when you gave me that, and I'm going to let her introduce herself in a minute, because I know you'll be like, well, who is this? Who is this? All right, I'm going to let her, I'm going to let her give you a little something in a minute. It's just that when you when I was thinking about how I was ordering and, and putting the steps out, it was exactly the way she said the transformation in the mindset space has to take for, place first. And then that ability to inspire people and empower them to take action. That's what ties, you know, everything, you know, together. Mm-hmm. I thought, okay, I'm about to be rocking with that. Thank oh, you. Yes, honey, Thank you. Great. Yes. <laughs> So without further ado, I'm going to let Desiree introduce herself to you. Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you, Dana, first of all, for having me on your show. Like, this is an honor. And we have laughed and joked behind the scenes like, girl, I'm, I feel like I'm going on my first date. And <laughs> that's exactly what I feel like right now. Like, my palms are sweating and everything. But anyway, enough of that. I am Des of Des 360 Wisdom and Wit for Women. And I am so excited to be here because my mission in life is to empower women to create, nurture, and transform. And those are all things that we were brought on this earth to do. It's nothing that we have to really work hard at as long as we get centered and get focused. And so within us, we have everything that we need. And so sometimes we just need a little bit of motivation, a little inspiration, and a little push. And so that's what my mission is, to be a solution to life's problems for women and girls. Mm, And what a powerful um, resource you are from them just within your own story and your own journey. And for all you listeners out there, again, if you are tuning in, whether you're on iTunes, Apple Music Play, Google Music Play, Stitcher, Spotify, soon to be iHeartRadio, wherever you're listening to. And if you know someone that definitely needs to hear what's getting ready to happen, tell them to grab a pen and a paper before they listen to the episode, because this is definitely going to be some powerful nuggets that come from this conversation, because this conversation is all about the disappearing woman. Now, I'm telling you, this is how I got to give them a little bit of how we even connected, which was a divine connected already ordered, you know, by God. But again, when it reveals itself and it comes into your space, it's just like the timing is perfect. And that I was actually on my LinkedIn and I saw the episode that she had. It was entitled The Disappearing Woman. I said, oh, let me click this. This is this is right up up my alley because I've been speaking to a lot of women about their identity and who they are and do they have a clarity and understanding and a confidence about who they are and their whys and are they living consistently in 
again, their clarity about who they are. So I said, let me listen to it. Oh my gosh, it was so powerful. And so I literally just on LinkedIn in the message box said, um, I need to be in on this conversation and we need to even have a part two. <laughs> that, that is all true. That is all true. That is all true. And then it was like, and I just did it on, on a, on a whim and a risk. And I say that because sometimes we get that notion to just move and to act. And then we talk ourselves out of it. Mm -hmm. But at that point, I was like, this woman, she doesn't know me. She might think I'm crazy. You know, I'm going through. And I said, well, it doesn't really even matter. All because those self-sabotaging things that we do. Yes. And I said, I need to reach out. And if she reaches out, great. What do I have to lose? And so as we continue the conversation, I'm like, that's where I kind of go in and, and give some insight back to the first part. And then you definitely need to head on over, okay, to please make sure you give them how to link in to hear the actual first episode. Cause they're going to need to hear that too, okay. as well as couple that um, with here. So definitely let them know where they can reach out to get to that. Um, and to get to your podcast and your show and your blog and that they can, how they can also be a part of that conversation and add their little nuggets. But I believe that every woman needs to listen. Every woman, I don't care if you're doing well, doing not so well in between, in, they need to listen to that podcast. Wow. Episode. Okay. All right. Tell them a little bit about kind of where the idea and how that started and what you were sharing um, in that episode. So, yeah. So I was, I've, I've just launched my new brand, Des360, Wisdom and Wit for Women. And my website is Des360.com, D-E-Z-T-H-R-E-E-S-I-X-T-Y. -E -E so it's all spelled out, Des360.com. And there you can find my blogs and the links to my podcast. I'm available on seven different outlets, including Spotify, Google, and um, iTunes, of course, are the most popular. Um, and I post every day about something, but typically I'll give you a blog or a podcast once a week. Okay. So I had, I've started this journey. I launched May 12th, which was Mother's Day and my birthday. And it was kind of like a dual gift to myself. I didn't really know what I was going to offer people, but you know, I'm one of those type of people that when I speak to people, they're like, okay, you need a show. You need to be talking about this. Everybody needs to hear what you have to say. And of course the self-sabotaging self kicks in and I'm like, nobody wants to hear anything I have to say because I'm not saying anything. So I went into this, um, totally new as a novice. I had no background training or anything. So one of the things I always say in my podcast is if you have any ideas to reach out to me, if you want to hear something, um, discussed in particular, want my perspective on it, then, you know, reach out to me and I'll see what I can do. Um, because my content comes from my education background and my background in counseling, but I also like to bring in some, you know, research because some people just, they don't believe in it until they hear statistics. So I like to bring that part of it in. So someone reached out to me, a family member, actually, and she was like, hey, why don't you talk about, you know, how we lose ourselves as women? She's like, I've been married X amount of years and me and my husband has been together X amount of years, which is even longer than they've been married. They were like high school sweethearts or something to that effect. And she found like she felt like she was losing herself. And so that was kind of a. Um, <laughs> a loaded type of request, because when you're talking about a woman losing herself, there are so many components, Dina, that come up. OK, are you talking about losing yourself as a mother? Are you talking about losing yourself as a wife? Are you talking about losing yourself as just a woman, as an individual? So it kind of becomes heavy loaded. So I thought about it. I started doing some research and I came across um, an article that was written and it made note of a psychoanalyst, Beverly Engel. And she wrote a book entitled Loving Him Without Losing Yourself. Wow. She actually refers to the process of us shrinking ourselves. And, um, you know, we say losing ourselves, but it's really shrinking ourselves and overly accommodating others so that, you know, they're taken care of and our needs are not met. Um, she calls it the disappearing woman. Mm. I was like, that's perfect. Because wow. the disappearing woman, when you think about the word disappear, it doesn't mean that you are non-existent. It's just you've disappeared from the space that you were once in. So if I walk out of the room, you could say I disappeared. It doesn't mean that I'm totally gone. It just means that I'm not in the same space. So it makes you kind of think about what have you disappeared from? So I just wow. went for it. There was no script. Um, I just started talking about women that I know and even myself, how we get so confused about a mask versus actually disappearing. Those are different things. 
Right. Because you could be in the room mm -hmm. with a mask on mm -hmm. and you're still not present. Absolutely. And, um, <laughs> and that's a whole nother that's 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 two shows mm -hmm. of doing that. But something you said just really triggered something for me and the power of legacy building. Okay. And, and having a place of significance. And when I think about my current work, walking through glass, the ultimate guide to be saying sexy and significant in a male dominated world. And I, and people are like, well, why did you use the word sexy? And why do you use the word significant? And why do you use that? And really what I'm speaking to first and foremost is that owning that clarity that we have and who we are as women, that's sexy. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, as sexy as can possibly be. I'm not talking about wearing, hanging with clothes and your clothes hanging off of you. Exactly. And then also that sanity, that clarity you have is so powerful because when you know what season you're in and what stage you're in, in on your journey, as you transition between stages and places, and as you transition, you don't usually lose as much of yourself. I said as much, because I think we, in all honesty, we lose a little bit of something, yeah. but we don't lose as much. We don't disappear. But the big part of that, and I realize in what I feel and I'm so passionate about in the work that I do is in the significance part. And with that, that's where that legacy piece is. What are we leaving behind once we leave the room? So when you were saying that, you know, once you walk off the room is that, you know, you've technically disappeared. And although that might be the case, what I immediately thought of, but what did I leave behind? What essence or part of me did I leave there that still is part of my legacy that's adding value? Because I said, you know what? You really don't know how people feel about you until you hear them talking when you left the room. Absolutely. I always say, if I could just be a fly on the wall. Mm -hmm. You know, it was one of those things. So that was powerful. So that's when you said that, that I just triggered that and then get to the fact that like we were sharing and having a conversation with before is that as women at different stages of our life, from when we leave our family, from our family homes to either living on our own or going to college, getting married or not being married, you know, all of these different things that happen in these different transitions we may have in our life, career transitions can cause us to disappear, mm -hmm. you know, for various reasons. Absolutely. And and when you think about the word disappear though, Dina, you know, mm -hmm. you know, it's a multiple meaning word. And so yeah. one of the, the, the verb meaning of dis disappear is to cease to be visible. Mm -hmm. And so it, in essence, they mean to vanish from sight. So, you know, leaving out of a room or something like that, you know, then you have cease to ex exist or be in use. Mm. Um, and so when you just was talking about how you could be in the room and still not be in the room, then you, you, in some ways disappeared because you're not in use, you've checked out. And right. so then the question comes up, what has made you check out? What part of yourself mm -hmm. is void or, uh, have you disconnected or disengaged? Um, one of the things that I mentioned in the, the initial podcast um, the good news is that if you've lost yourself, you can always find yourself. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to recover all the pieces, right? It's like when you mm -hmm. take a vase or something, you know, you can get all of them, but it's always the small pieces that can never be repaired or restored. But for the most part, you can go back and kind of put it together and pull it together and it can be functional again. And so the very first thing is know who you are. Mm -hmm. You just have to know who you are. And that goes back to your authentic and your authentic self, like at the core of your being, who are you? You have to start there. There's no way that you can keep yourself from disappearing if you don't even know who you are. Mm -mm. You know, I'm gonna, I am I want to go roll, roll back just a little bit to when you talked about that broken piece and being shattered and being put back together. And I wrote a piece and one of the first anthology works that I did, I shared um, the concept of Kintsugi, the art of being beautifully broken. Mm -hmm. And that you don't get all the pieces back. Certain fragments are here and there, mm -hmm. but it's how you put yourself back together mm -hmm. that can actually make your life more fruitful and more valuable. Mm -hmm. And so in Japanese culture, the pottery, when it's broken, mm -hmm. they don't throw it away. You can't throw your life away because of situation or circumstance. But what they do to this pottery is that they actually put it back together with silver, gold, platinum, precious metals. 
And they say that it's actually the cracks in the fissures that make, it that make you more beautiful because it's part of your growth journey. So who you are now, and I've shared this before and I'll share it again. And I love sharing it and saying this is that I can't truly love who I am today if I deplore everything that made me. Oh, absolutely. I say that all the time. And one of my favorite sayings is that, you know, I told my story so that no one else can take my power away. Because I think Mm -hmm. a lot of times we dismiss our past because other people are telling it it's wrong. It's off. It's not the full story. It it lacks your perspective and your humanity, you know? And so then we want to discount it as nothing or that was the past and that's it. I openly and freely, one of the things that I've been uh, on a journey with myself um, and obviously having a book, a podcast and a blog now is just out there. I don't, I don't even care. I tell people before, you know, like there were things that I did and my mom was unaware of when she read my book. She wow. was like, OK, I just need some time. I don't think she ever brought it up. I think I had to bring it up like that. You read the book. I know you bought it. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Hello. You know, and so that's one of the things It's like, you know, scars are indicative that you survive something. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the beauty. And it's like, yeah, I have this scar, but I survived it. You could have, a lot of people don't survive some things. You know, you have people committing suicide daily. You have mm-hmm. people um, that are living miserably daily because of their mm-hmm. circumstance. But I mean, to say that you can look at a scar and say, you know what, I survived this, this happened because of this, or this is when this happened, whether it's an internal scar or one that's uh, visible, you know, you survived something. And that's that's the caveat to this whole piece about being a disappearing woman, like go back to where you started, go back. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to go back and figure out like, Hey, there's no need for me to disappear at this point because I've made it through all these things showing up and being present. Yes. I mean, just when I was listening to you and I thought about again, my own real true E Hollywood story. (laughs) And there's things that, you know, my family doesn't know, my friends don't know, oh, yeah. you know, um, that I've kept. And you wonder how holding on and keeping those things impact how you process now. And if you don't think it does it, I'm going to tell you that's a, that's a lie. If you read Bruce Lipton's Biology of Belief, you'll understand that any and everything that we have been made conscious of and have been touched by you know, in verbiage or, or indeed Mm -hmm. impact. So that's why you have to have a clarity and understanding of who you really are. And I'm a firm believer that 50% of knowing who you are is knowing who you're not. Mm. So you've got to get very clear about that. So you can be very confident in your walk and very consistent in your actions. And that when you really do the work. And I'm going to tell you the work that I've begun doing with myself on myself in the last year and a half, two years has been hard work. Yeah. It's been, um, emotional work and this sense of self-discovery. So your point to just because you've disappeared or you felt you've lost yourself doesn't mean that you can't, you know, to me, I don't even think you can get your old self back. You can get a better version no, of you yourself. You don't want your old self back. Anyway. You don't want your old self back, right? You don't want your old self. That's the person right. who you want to show up for. That's the person who you want to want to see. You definitely don't want her back. Leave her wherever she is. She has disappeared. Bye, boo. Go say over there, Felicia yeah. and Felipe Bye, and Felipe. Like, Lupe. Go no, leave them there. And so, when you think about those things. And I can only start and speak from my point when I think about how that role has played. And I was having a conversation um, a little bit earlier um, with one of the authors for my anthology coming up about not just the, the anthology is a first step for her in really telling her full story. Mm-hmm. And when we'll work on her full actual book story, because she needs to process through some things to be able to tell the fullness yeah, thereof. Absolutely. And you got to be ready. So when you, when we talk about disappearing, I am speaking from a space of not that you have a clarity and an awareness of some things, but you're not ready to share, but really you don't even know where you're at and you've just kind of feel lost in some sort of void, dark hole somewhere. Because sometimes I know that where I'm at on my journey, I'm going to process this piece right now. Cause this is all my bandwidth I got. 
<laughs> you know, because I make those things that are unconscious conscious so that I can deal with them. And I think that we tend to disappear as women because of all those unconscious beliefs that often have become a part of our psychological DNA at points in time in our life when we did not have the wherewithal to rebuke it or repel it. And we don't really understand that. Well, why? We keep saying, I don't know why. Well, that's probably true. Yeah, no, it, it definitely is. And, you know, your past is definitely, you know, a predictor of future events um, if you are not aware so awareness is everything. And to speak to your point about knowing who you are and 50% of it is knowing who you aren't, that that in itself, for me, when you just said it, made everything else clear that I'm, I was sitting here thinking because um, I've done so many things from <laughs> abortions to dating the, 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 I'm from the South side of Chicago. And so dating the biggest dope boy and um, being basically in a abusive relationship as a teenager, like all kinds of stuff, right? And mm -hmm. so as an adult, I had kind of, because in some ways I was a product of my environment, though I was quote unquote doing better than they in my community was doing because they were pregnant as teens. Well, I was too. I just got an abortion. You see what I'm saying? So it's the mentality that goes along with it that you have to ship. And so when I yep. wrote my book, um, Beautiful Like a Flower, I first published it in 2005. And it came to me because it definitely was not me trying to expose myself. Let me say that because in some ways I was living a double or even a triple life. If that Ooh, that part. Yeah. So it was not about me, um, you know, trying to expose myself or even tell my story. I never in my life thought I would say some of the things that I say. Um, but God had given it to me in my sleep. And so I was obedient. That's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> um, I was obedient and I, I wrote the book, right? <laughs> the whole time I yep. was writing the book, like you mentioned, the young lady, in your anthology, I really thought I was writing the book for, for other people, because this is my mission. My purpose is to help. And part of that helping, we are, we, we've been taught that, you know, um, there's healing in our testimonies. And so, and so I thought that I was, I thought you know, going to my you know, testimony about everything that I've been through, everything that I've overcome in order to help someone else. What I soon found out is that the book publishing was really for me to heal myself. Um, mm. I had to sit there and face myself. I had to like Michael Jackson said, look the man look the man in the mirror. Look at the man in the mirror. Because the things that I that I had done, I had subconsciously suppressed them in some ways. So that's what we do as women and that's part of the disappearing. We know that we've done something, we process what we can process, and then the rest of it we never go back in touch and then it resurfaces in some way. And then we process what we can process and then we let the rest suppress. And so then now you have, you're an adult woman who has these issues that's been suppressed since you were a child and you you can't figure out what the problems are, why you respond the way you respond, why you react the way you react. Well, there are some unresolved issues is what I call them. And they need to be resolved. They need to be faced, resolved, dug up, and then put out. So that's part of not disappearing. That's part of showing up and taking responsibility for exactly who you are and what you've done. Now, what I always like to tell women, what you've done is not necessarily who you are. That's so true. That's what we get caught up at. You know, like, I was saying, that's what we get caught up yeah, at. That's the problem. And so because you've made a mistake, you've like, because I've had an abortion doesn't mean that I'm a mass murderer or I'm a killer. I just right. made a bad, uninformed decision, really. And that's what mm -hmm. I did. Um, because you, you know, in my bio, my bio, I say that I prostitute him. I was a prostitute. So in, in the true sense of the word, if you think about prostitution, the, the meaning itself means that you, you give yourself up sexually in some form of fashion in exchange for monies or gifts, right? So right. That's what I did. When I was in high school, Jada, it was a method behind everything I did. So that's prostitution. No, I didn't. I wasn't on a strip, but I was still prostituting myself. It's no different than women now saying, you know, oh, where well, he's all good, girl. He paid for my hair, my nails, and my rent. Yeah, what are you doing for it? You're prostituting yourself. Right. So it's just about calling a thing a thing. And once you can get to that point, and it's, it's painful, <laughs> mm -hmm. it is shameful. It is. And it is very challenging to, it's like, write really down your painful. own rap sheet and look at it. And take responsibility and say, no, these decisions were made solely by me. 
for whatever the reason, it, it could be justifiable. That doesn't matter. You did it, right? Once right. you can get to that point, then you can start showing up because it doesn't matter what anyone says to me. I'm good. Yeah, I did those things. That's not who I am. As a matter of fact, it wasn't who I was when I was doing them. It was just an act. You know, it was something I did. Doesn't mean it's who I am. So you have to kind of differentiate between who you are and what you do. It's not necessarily the same thing in every situation anyway. That's true. And that's, and that's the power behind clarity. And that's the power behind really doing the work and, and being very conscious in that we beat ourselves up. We use that inner, that inner bully just, you know, punches us. And I was sharing on one of my um, social media platforms about who is they. And I said, really, who they is, is the individual we call me. It's so crazy that when we are looking at who we think we are and who we are concerned that others might be, that we begin to, um, I guess the best way that I could describe it is we can begin to take away those fears that we have. And it's those fears that are just driving us. And so then we start calling those fears they. And that part is the scary part. That part is when we have to make that conscious and we have to call, like you said, a thing, a thing so that we can stop doing that. Okay. As we talk about what a disappearing woman is, and we both had opportunities in on our journey to experience that to a certain extent. And I love what you said by you got to call a thing, a thing um, to do that. Now let's pivot into how do we help and support women who are disappearing and they may not recognize the fact or who might know it and are saying, I need some help. What do I do? You know what? That's strange that you even added that caveat to say that they don't know, because the biggest thing for me is awareness. And so you have to even know that you're losing yourself in order to regain yourself or parts of yourself. Right. Right. So some things to know about losing yourself is that, you know, when you've lost sight of your own dreams and your own passion, when you start to lack self-confidence, you know, and self-confidence is a byproduct of having a strong sense of self. Mm -hmm. And so if you lack that, then there may be a chance that you could be in some ways, you know, actually losing yourself. Um, I know women that have said, I'm so desperate just to get back to my old self or to feel like myself again. Mm -hmm. you find yourself shrinking yourself, um, putting others happiness and dreams or needs and interests before your own. Those Especially your children. See, I, I'm oh, sorry to jump oh, in because... Yeah. That part right there is where we can recognize it when it comes to work. Oh, I'm, they won't let me have a seat at the table. Right. Oh, I didn't get that promotion. Oh, I didn't get that opportunity. You can see it when you have friends and, and you're out socially. But what most women that I know, mm -hmm. and myself included at a previous point in time, we do it all the time for our children all the time and we get so lost in our children and their lives and their worlds. And we make them our end and be all that when they grow up and want to either start their own journey, you play a hate on them and try to put yourself all up in the mix, you know, whether it's male or female, or you totally don't know what to do. I've had so many clients say, my children are grown. They're going to college. I don't even know what to do with myself now. I don't oh, know. Who I am. Shucks. Go live. You know what I mean? Go get your life back. What do you mean? Let me tell you a funny story. My daughter is 14. I have <laughs> a bonus son who's 12. We have a 20-month-old, and I am with child due in August. Uh, yay. Right? So yay, but wait, because <laughs> I thought I was done having children. Like, my daughter is 14. Did you hear me say that? She's 14. I heard. I heard. And so while you have people on one hand saying, I don't know what to do, I thought I was almost done. I was at least on my way to high school and then get her through college. And let me tell you, my daughter is very self-sufficient, all of that. So it was going to be great. And then, of course, I'm remarried. My husband and I have been married for three years. Congratulations. So, thank you. And so it's like, here I am, two little babies in the house. So what are you going to do? Let me help you answer your client's question. You go get your life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Girl. 
Yes, indeed. No, but seriously, I understand because um, for at one point in time, I was so focused on on rearing my child that I really did for a long time. As a matter of fact, um, I got pregnant when I was in college and I pushed myself past my quit. I refused to give up. As a matter of fact, my grades and everything was better than they had ever been. I made straight A's in all my core courses, graduated cum laude. Like I, I wanted to like overdrive. And I became somewhat of a um, overachiever, if you will, because I had to have make sure my life was perfect so that her life can be perfect. And she didn't experience the things that I experienced growing up and things like that. And so we do get caught up in essence in our children. You know what I mean? Like I didn't even date her dad and I were divorced um, before she was two and I didn't date anybody for years. Like the only other person she's ever seen me with, and she was so young, she never saw me with her dad. Of course, wow. the pictures and know the story, um, most of the story. Um, and so she's only ever seen me with my husband, my current husband. Wow. Sounds so we had to, you know, make, there was a major transition, counseling, all of that. So I understand what you're saying about losing yourself, but I had to, I had to put my foot down as well, you know? So we do, we get caught up as parents and it's, it's really, it's really, I don't, it's unfortunate really because who we are when we present ourselves is who the world falls in love with. And then when we lose ourselves, then who do you then present? Mm-hmm. Wow. So anyway. But, but it, there's always opportunities to reinvent. And so when I think about my journey and Again, I speak from my own experiences. I tell people the things I share and when I'm talking to groups and I'm talking to women, and I'm on stage, whether it's corporate or in community, I'm telling you, these are the things that I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I think about how my life and my own transitions and what I have to also honor and understand in that transition. And that a period of time when I did the massive career transition and that what I recognized by the mid year or almost within that year that I was in a transitional depression and that wow. I, I said, whoa, I'm actually depressed. And before you couldn't say, you wouldn't normally say I'm depressed because it meant that you had to go and get therapy and get straight. That's not what it is. And I was operating, I was doing things. But I knew at the end of the day, and I knew that feeling, like you said, I felt like I didn't understand who I were, where I was. I didn't know what to do, actually. I knew how to do things, but I meant for me. Like, I could always level up and action out for somebody else. Absolutely. But I couldn't get it together for me. For yourself. Show it up for myself. myself. So I, could, I didn't show up for myself. And then it got to the point where I just wanted to stay in the bed. I didn't even really want to eat. I just wanted to sleep. I didn't want to, you know, and all of these things, but because the way my brain is set up and the, the God I serve, it was hey, like, um, yet. Okay. <laughs> it was like, I do a lot of reflection. I do a lot of self-reflecting. And self-mastery is really, really key. And that um, I start doing a lot of work in that space. So I was able to call the thing a thing instead of saying, oh, no, I'm just tired. No, you're depressed. Yeah. So when people say that, I said, why are you depressed? I'm not depressed where I'm at the point where I want to go have commit suicide. That was not what I was speaking to. Right. I was depressed because I was lamenting a life that I thought I lost and had been in love with. Hmm. And it was hard. And although I could understand it when it happened to other people and I could be there for them and I could process it on their level and in their space, is that initially it was so hard for me because I was so outside of my zone. I left a position of purpose and power and a nice hefty paycheck to start over. Yeah. In a space, in a place where people did not honor and respect the space that I came from. And it was taking, I mean, being a K-12 educator, being a school principal, school administrator, if you have to take what that role means and put it in a corporate world, that's what your C-suite people do. Mm -hmm. But if you take that ideology into a corporate world, they don't understand that. And so when you walk in that space, even as Dr. Brown, 
that really didn't have as much meaning for them. Oh, right. You had to be the CEO of blank, the CFO of blank, the COO of blank. Well, guess what I've done? My whole whatever. I was the COO, CEO, CEO of my school. I ran schools. Oh, and I am a former educator myself of almost 10 years, never in that space. But let me tell you, I commend you because I cannot even imagine. I have never desired to want to <laughs> run a, a, a school. I always say it's a larger classroom because clearly, you know, you have to manage everybody else, including parents, community. Like I'm, I was always good with that. Like, no, thank you. I'll be the grade level chair, but I will <laughs> not be in the yes. No, not happening. You had to manage mindsets. You had to to really um, strike and make sure everybody understood the vision and make sure that they knew the mission and was connected to the vision, not only the district and the, um, the program vision, but the schools. So it was a lot. So why I'm so great in the corporate space mm -hmm. is because, oh, you're talking about school improvement or you're talking about improvement processes? Boo, I got you. Yep. Ain't nothing like taking educators. <laughs> the school improvement process, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, community yeah. And to get certified. And then I was a 2012 Blue Ribbon principal. Oh, wow. So, uh, for academic excellence. Oh, I know what a Blue Ribbon means. Look, you better tell that to the listeners. I know what that Blue Ribbon means. <laughs> but you, and I'm glad you said that. You know what it meant. Yeah. They don't know what it means. Know what it means. It. So when I, had, when I talk about a transitional depression, is that I came from the space where no other words, no way to use it, but I was, I still am, but I was the shit what? <laughs> to now enter rooms that people understood my skill set. They understood my craft and my gift, but they had no understanding of how positionally mm -hmm. I was going to work within their companies. Yeah, I can do training. I can do this, blah, blah, blah. But they didn't understand that. And so for me, that transition that was ne needed and necessary was also difficult for me because I was like, okay, do I go? I don't want to go back to K-12. Do I only want to work with schools? No. You know, it was like, what do I do? How do I do this? And so I do do some work with some schools and it's great. And I feel that pull kind of like, you know, you see your little cute baby and then your, your uterus start, <laughs> ovaries start fluttering and uh -huh. stuff. As I told somebody, I said, that's the only thing you could do because I ain't got no uterus no more. Oh, so okay. I have okay. no baby. Okay. All right. uh, so. Baby when it <laughs> yes. So I'll be loving all. I'll be like. Stop. I have people go, stop. Can I just see the baby? Um, did you send me the baby pictures yet? Lord, did you help me Lord? <laughs> help me, Lord. So in that in that vein, that transitional depression is real, that disappearing. So what I wanted to do, which is when I saw that post, I knew that at a period of time in my life, all I, I wanted to disappear. You see, it wasn't that I didn't know. It wasn't that it just kind of was happening. That's what I wanted. Because my world had been out of, it was, it was in chaos. And it was imbalanced. And just to clear it up, I can't help it. Uh, as I told you, I have a background in psychology and counseling as well. And so people so often misinterpret what depression is. So there are yes. remedies to this thing. There's yep. levels to this thing, you know? So when she, when Dina is talking about a depression necessarily. She's not talking about major depressive disorder as defined right. by the, the, the DMR. You know what I'm saying? That's not what she's talking right. about. She's talking about the depression that is uh, feelings of severe despondency or dejection, you know, the gloominess, the unhappiness, right. um, being low in spirit. And so that's, that's the difference. People think that, um, that, you know, when you say depressed, like you said, oh boy, now you have to go and get, you know, tested and you have to take all of these, um, you know, meds and go through all of these services and things like that. And that's just not the case. Like I've been depressed and I, and I, you know, and I say that all the time, like depression is not the end of the world. You could definitely make no. it. Right. Um, you know, it, it depends <laughs> like on what you are, you know what I mean? And some people are severely depressed and they mm -hmm. do medical professional, Yes. you know, so I don't want to act like it's nothing or depression is like a common cold. It's no. not, it's not, no matter where you are on the scale of depression, it's not easy. But I it's not easy. That you have and, and here's the thing, what it and, it's, and it's not something that makes you less than to say, yeah, I am. And so that's what it is. And when you 
when you're in denial a lot of times, mm-hmm. and even when you were speaking about um, the medication, because like, I don't want to be medicating, but many of you are self-medicating. Oh my God. Without well, alcohol, don't believe, please. And okay, I'm sorry. Okay, oh that's a whole other question. So, so, and, oh and I noticed that I was self-medicating. Yes. With alcohol. Mm-hmm. And it was like, now again, I've never been a drop, not a smoke, you know, whatever, but it was, I was a random social drinker, purely mostly designated driver to every day. I felt like, you know what? I just need to have a glass of wine, whatever, just to kind of mellow out. Yeah. And it was different than saying, Hey, I'm again, I'm not talking about people who just want to go out and have a drink. I'm talking about for me, I'm just sharing my story, my truth. Right. What it was to the point of, I just don't want to think about this because the way my brain is set up <laughs> yeah. is going and it's thinking. And, and when I'm in that thinking mode and then I'm now processing things that don't make a lot of sense for me at this point in time, because I'm still trying to figure out that way out that I don't want to think right now. Mm-hmm. So I need to slow my thinking. And so I started drinking oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, well, and it was more and more. It went from one glass yep. to the bottle because oh, the bottle's open. And it was like, well, the bottle's open. And I didn't really hide it so much. Cause I was like, whatever I, I can, I, I've, I'm drinking. Cause yes, I want to have a drink. And, but even in that, I was still hiding and disappearing to who I know that I am. Yeah. And I was responding to my current situational stimuli. Yeah, and it was avoidance. You were really ultimately trying yes. to avoid everything. And I tell people all the time, you know, it's all right. Look, I am a realist. So I know people smoke, they drink, do whatever, they mellow out. And socially, okay, that may be fine for you. No judgment at all, okay? <clears throat> but when you start to do it to avoid situations or when you drink and then your drink is wearing off, so you have to have another drink or you smoke and then you have to go smoke some more because that has now worn off, you got to... That then that becomes a problem. Now I need to look at the DSM five and give you a code because you probably do need some psychological help because now you have comorbidity showing up, which is two concurrent issues that yep. really could be a really big issue if we don't get a handle on it. Right? So, you know, it's just a lot that goes with it. But I know we've gone all the way in a circle, Dina. I know you. No, but it's, but it's it's, it's a perk. What well, it is? Because that's why you three sixty, right? Yeah, it Boom. is. It is three sixty. Yes. Let me tell you, I tell people, honey, it had to be dead three sixty because. Yes. With my experience and my background and, you know, personal experience and then, you know, educational experience and, and my background, it's like, I'm not trying to limit myself because when I limit myself, that means I'm limiting my reach. So that's, that's right. not going to happen. I'm no longer going to do that. Um, but just wanted to put that perspective out there because it's like you have to. And when you're in it, let me say this. When you're in it, you don't necessarily see it. Right. You may see it at first and you, you're aware that you're doing it. But at some point you lose an awareness that I have drank the whole bottle of wine and yeah, back to back to back. Like it wasn't that I drank it over a course of the day because it's a Saturday and I'm just chilling out and I have guests over. No, I just kept pouring glasses of wine Mm -hmm. and now the whole bottle was gone. And then it's like, I like the taste of it. Now the other truth to it, because again, the way my brain is set up, I'm kind of like a unicorn in the midst of all this stuff because I sit and because of, again, that background, um, when you're in, especially the educational field. And when you're going to do different levels, you have to do so much study in psychology yes. and behavioral science and, yes. and all of those things. And even since my mom said I was a little kid, I would do something not analyze it, you know? Yes. So that's just the way I'm set up. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I, what are you, and I'll be writing it down. I see what you're doing. And I'd have these conversations with myself, but here's the part where I realized I was in trouble because I knew what was going on and what I was doing. And at one point in time, I said, I don't care. Wow. I don't care. Wow. And that's what that part is when, when I heard myself say this to myself Mm -hmm. is when I got scared. Yeah, that is a thing. And I said, I said, Oh, wait a minute, because that's not you. So when I say that sometimes we can't do things for ourselves, you can't. And, and this is what's emotional for me is that I then had to look and I said, Dina, you're Xavier's mom. What is Xavier going to do? You better get your shit together. So when I couldn't do it for me, at that moment, I had to make a decision that I had to do it for him. And that was okay too. It wasn't like, oh, I can have to do it. It was like, so Zay, when I say his name means savior. Hmm, girl, okay. you birthed his own savior. savior. Okay. <laughs> and I did it because at the time, which is a whole nother story, the time he came into my life and I tell people all the time, he saved my life. 
So his name is Xavier Alexander, which means savior, defender of the people. Mm. And that's his spirit. That's his personality. And there's power in names. And so there's power in words we use. And so at a time and every time when I was hitting rock bottom and I had to make a decision and a tough decision because I was disappearing, I had to look at him who's now 17 years old and 6'2 and 260 wow. pounds. And, and you he's know. been saving his mom life since he got he's been saving his mom life since he was conceived. <laughs> And, 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 and that's that part when I say we ebb and flow and this journey that we're on, that we embrace it, but everything that I've been through on this journey has prepared me for such a time as now. So when I keep telling people, when you look at me and you see me, please, you can place me on a pedestal with a tiara. I'll wear it, but I'm not better than you. And I'm not above you, but I do like standing on the pedestal though. Hey, yeah, hello. <laughs> Cause it's, but, but it's not about being above you. Mm-hmm. It's not having you beneath me. And right now it's about how do we, how do I be that beacon for you to say, listen, I've been through it. Here's what, here were my keys to getting up. Here's the secret sauce. Here's what I did. Here's how I started. And if this works for you, cool. If not, what will work for you? You got to start developing that because what it worked exactly for me may not have worked exactly for you. And that's okay too. But guess what? Here's a place to start. So you don't have to be blind. And even sometimes just knowing that you are not alone in something or that you're not oh, alone yes. going through something can help you come out and then even begin to be curious enough of how to bring yourself out or to a degree to which you start seeking help. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's true that every doctor needs a doctor. Yeah. You know, so the same thing I say, every educator needs an educator. Every therapist needs one. A every coach needs a coach. coach. You know, a coach yeah. needs a coach. And so this whole piece about you know, lifting the next person and building them up. It, yeah. It's not, it's not just a saying. It's not it just, we don't, I don't say it because it sounds cute, you know, because right. I want to empower women and girls to be the best self and to be who God created them to be. I'm not saying that just to say that. I know because one day, not too long ago, I was out of character and out of line and out of purpose. Yes. And so once you get there, it feels so great. Then you can really see who you are because oftentimes, People leave this earth literally dying daily and not know who they are or their life's mission. Right. I don't want people around me or people I come in account with to be one of those people because mm-hmm. I have an opportunity to, to reach you. If you've come across me in whatever way, I believe that there is a reason for everything. No meeting is by accident. And so I always say either I'm your assignment or you're mine. It could be both. Yes. I'm not going to leave you untouched. Yes. You know, so I tell people yes. all the time, like I have a really close friend, you know, like I said, I just relaunched my brand. I'm like, oh my God, I'm just so proud of you. She's like, I need to start doing what I'm supposed to do. It was a, supposed to be a quick call. She texts me out of the blue. We normally just text. And she's like, can you call me? I was like, wait a minute, a call. I'm getting worried <laughs> because we, our friendship is based off text. We're busy. We're married and kids and all this stuff, you know? And so when she asked me to call, I was like, oh, absolutely. I made it my, I stopped doing what I was doing. I called and the call was basically about her knowing what her purpose is, but still living outside of God's will and not fulfilling her purpose. I said, that's a dangerous place to be in. Let me tell you. And so I just spoke to her as a friend. I didn't go deep. I I could, but I didn't go deep. I just told her what I did. Hey, just start somewhere. Where do you want to start? What are you trying to do? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you everything I know. And I'm that type of person. If I know something, I'm not keeping it from the next person because my purpose is not going to be impeded upon by you fulfilling your purpose. That's right. So if I know something, hey, or if I, girl, don't use that app, girl, I made a mistake. It'll erase all your stuff, whatever it is, you know, be something simple. But, you know, a lot of times the other part of it and the other piece of this conversation, which is definitely another topic, is that women don't really authentically support other women. Mm -hmm. Why is that? What's that about? What is that? And that, you know, I think, I think. There, I just actually had the conversation with another podcast um, guest and it's a theme that's running in a couple of episodes. And this is what I shared with her is that I don't believe that to be true. Totally. And, and what I love about what you said is authentically, but what she had said that caused me to have to interject what she said, the majority of, and I said, that's a lie. I said, I think that's a lie that we've been told that's been kind of bedded in. Mm-hmm. I said, it's not a majority. Are there people out there? Yes. 
<laughs> but it's not a majority because how are we connected then? You see what I mean? Right. Absolutely. And, 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 that's and so, yeah. authentic. it's the authentic, authentic part. part. So that's what I love about what you said is that um, since the moment that I connected with you, like you, and I told you, I said, this is the first time that I had someone that can be a me in the conversation. Like, oh, wait, stop. Do that. Yeah, and I was like, am I overstepping boundaries? Because I was like, no. like some people are like, girl, I don't need you to tell me nothing about what I know what I'm doing. Okay, well, I just, I just got to download from God. So do you want me to share with you or not? Because yeah, and that's all my mom, I don't know, I didn't know anything about your platform at the time. I was just like, oh, my God, I need to tell her this. And the same way that you were calling with the email in the beginning, I was yes. totally was saying like, can I please just say this to you without like, I promise you I'm not trying to change your stuff because you're doing great. Yeah, no, no. I was like, yes. And so then I'm like, and I love the fact I'm like, okay, wait, Desi, what about this? And you're like, yeah. oh, wait, you yeah. know, and, and it's because when you win, I win. Absolutely. I am so excited. I have a friend. Well, not necessarily. She's, I wouldn't say a friend. I would say someone I know because I have expectations of people when you get to be in my friends. So I don't use it. I don't use the term lightly. Mm -hmm. And I tell anyone I meet, I'm not, again, this is, this is who I am authentically. Mm -hmm. And I tell you up front what my boundaries are, what my expectations Absolutely. are. Absolutely. And I don't tell you this because you think that I'm all that. And maybe you think I am, but I tell you this because I need you to understand who I am if we're going to get connected to each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I have expectations, but even anyone that I know, so they were sharing with me that they got, they're going on vacation. Oh, I was so happy. Where are you going? Oh, how can we help? Her? I was, I felt like I was so excited. Why? Because this person never takes a break. Got it. Got it. And I was like, I'm so happy for you. And I said, um, so when is the date? Let's do a calendar. You know, people right. looking like you. Going. Yeah. No, but she gone. That's going to be at the bomb. Right. You know? Right. And so I get excited. And at times when I am experiencing those emotions, because they still also happen, I'll see someone who is doing something that I know that God told me to move on before and I didn't. Uh, and I see them having results. I've had those tantrums. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. And yeah. I'm like, I'm not, and my tantrum is not about that person. It's about, it's it's about, about my about lack of action and movement. and movement. Right. And so when I start seeing that come, I have to check myself. So it doesn't mean I'm not happy for that person. It's just that I'm sitting there going, okay, so what you getting ready to do about it? Because you know that you are supposed to act, move, do A, B, C, and D. And so now you need to start moving on that. So I, but this has been growth. Here's my thing. I tell people, this is growth. Yeah. yeah. And everything I have been through, I have been at the lowest of the low for my world. That's so people say, well, you still yeah. had da, 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 da. I said, but you don't understand. I said, for my world. All right. To go from multiple six figures to six cents, you know, I so said that might be a book coming up, Ooh, baby, <laughs> you yeah, know, <laughs> and, and, and I said to having it all and having this glam and glitz and golden lifestyle with handcuffs on it, mental handcuffs to going to going, I don't know what's next. And I've shared the story when I first shared it out loud, I just broke into tears and I still get teary eyed thinking about it. But when I first shared it, I felt so free. So when I transitioned and when, again, that whole transitional depression, getting my life, you know, different things happening, all of these different roles, I remember um, well into that first, after the first year, because I had quite a bit of money stored up and then I got hit with some random, large, unexpected expenses. Okay. And that changed my trajectory because I was still living a life <laughs> that I was trying to live. Because I was like, I was like, <laughs> right, come on. I was still doing it. And then when the well started to dry up and I was like, okay, now what? And I remember that my son, you know what? He doesn't ask for anything really. And he's just really such a beautiful soul. I told him you're my greatest achievement and the mm -hmm. best thing I've ever made. And I tell him every day, I tell him that. And so he would take Uber sometimes, but I said, listen, I need you to talk to me before you take Uber. But before it didn't matter because I had money and you can do whatever you want. We get on plane, go wherever, you know? So right. he never thought about right. it. So I said, Xavier, I said, listen, I said, I need, because it's hitting my account. I need to know if you're taking all of these Ubers. Why? Because my income flow is different. So I remember um, I was waiting on a client to pay an invoice and entrepreneurship, that journey ain't, ooh, it can be the truth. So- 
I remember I probably had about $15 in the bank and I get a ding on my card because my son had just took a $9 Uber without even checking with me. So that means I'm praying that that check is coming in that realistically I had $6. That's where the concept of the six. Yeah. Yeah. And when I had never been in that frame space to be like, what? Like, where's all, you know, where's all my money? It was like, what I have. And I remember sitting there crying because I called him and I'm just fussing at him. I told you don't do this. That, call me first. It wouldn't have been like I would have said no, but I said at that point I had gas in my car. I could have went and picked you up. You literally just went two miles down the street, you know? Yeah. And it was it was all of that. But that it wasn't the trip in the Uber that was, it was where yeah. I was at to be totally broken to the point like, oh my gosh. And I was fussing at him and I'm looking at this son, my treasure, my life, you know, of my my heart that's in physical form Mm -hmm. and I could see because he's a a boy moms are special okay (laughs) and sons are special the relationship with their mom I can see this brokenness start with him and I said shut up I tell myself shut up because now you're so I told him I said I just want to stop you I'm sorry I had to apologize I said I, so we're talking about that, that state of mind that you're in (laughs) and this, I just, and I said, I'm sorry. I said, but I've told you, this is the situation. I know it's nothing like, you know, a year or so ago, you were celebrating your birthday in Dubai. You know what I mean? All this kind of stuff. I know that life is different for you. I know the divorce has been hard for you. I know this new moving to a new, everything is new. We live in a neighborhood and that too is a disparity because where the neighborhood I live in, Kids driving Teslas to school. You see what I'm saying? (laughs) So I said, I got that part, you know? And so I've poured everything I have into giving you this environment. So your schooling, (laughs) it stays on point. And I'm sacrificing on the other end. So I talked to him because what I started noticing after, I'm like, hey, do you need something for this? No. And he didn't want, he did not want me to pay for anything. He did not want to ask for anything. Not because he knew I wouldn't do it, but he was like, I am not going to cause any sort. And that was crushing for me. And I said, okay, I got, I got to, I, 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 I got to do something. You know, I got to come out of this. I got to start taking some greater actions. I got to do, you know, and in this whole piece of disappearing, losing yourself, finding yourself, getting yourself back on track, everything I've been through, bringing the story to that home point is that my whole journey has prepared me for now to help other women in transition, other women who are saying, I need to do some reinvention. I need to do some redefining. And that this is where I've had, I've had a had not, I've had a whatever, because before now, I didn't know what that was like. Yeah. Yeah. So everything I've been through has prepared me for such a time as now to speak from an authentic space. So I know what it's like to support my sister. I know what it's like to support an entrepreneur and to say, listen, I got a choice to make. I could buy bread today or I could pay for this course to help me, you know, get my business going. I can barter, you know, I know what that's like, you know, and that is why for me, I don't bastardize my talent. But I then begin to create multi levels to opportunities to work with me. You know, I started to look differently because why I then had been there. I know what that's like. And I also got tired of people cheating my sisters and my brothers. Yeah. <laughs> that's the other thing. Yeah. And that supporting thing. And I'm like, they're not, they're giving them fluff. They're giving them a document that they pulled off somewhere in the internet without any real strategies and operational systems and common sense to implement. And so I was like, okay. That champion. So all of that, you know, on this journey has been part of it. So when I said, God, make sure the people I need to be connected to, which is where that, that point that you said, okay, the authentically supporting, I said, please draw them to me. But what had to happen was I had to get clear about who I was. Yep. And what yep. I did. And then the connections will come. That's like what I said to you. Um, like, I don't even know why I wanted to inbox you or whatever. It was so that you had all these different thoughts. 
And I was like, and he was like, oh my God, he responded so quickly. I said, because I had been praying for divine connections. Wow. And so for me, it it was very clear about why you reached out to me. I, d- I didn't know you from a can of paint. You know what I mean? It was like, <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> it was like, okay. And I didn't hesitate. And normally I do that all that stuff out and all the other things that come with it. I was just like, oh, babe, this lady just inboxed me on LinkedIn. I said, I wonder if she was trying to contact me. And then he said, she inboxed you. I said, yeah, she inboxed me. He said, that wasn't an accident then, Shook. He calls me Shook. I was like, oh, that's true. Let me respond. So I responded right away so that I wouldn't clock myself out of it. And so here we are today in the beginning stages of what will be, I believe, a long-term relationship in whatever way that God sees fit for it to be, you know, and, you know, you don't put any extra on it. You don't take away from it. Mm -hmm. Operate in the space that God will have you to operate in, you know, and it's been already very beneficial. Um, both mutually beneficial beneficial without us even really trying just showing up on every call every text message as ourself and it's it's a feel-good relationship you know what I mean so Mm -hmm. um I like that yeah it's a A feel-good relationship yeah and write that down yeah you don't want relationships that you gotta do all this stuff for because it's like to what when does this end when do I have to stop jumping through hoops and proving myself and doing all this like I can just you're a good relationship. You know, I'll just show up. It's who I am and that's okay. I love the fact that, you know, and I don't extend that grace to everybody, not because everybody's not special, because I know that everybody's heart and authenticity and intentions are pure that I know that, you know, I just, you don't need to tell me, I know that, you know, that if you were doing something and working on something and you said, Dina, I need, you know, you could pick up the phone and say, okay, I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah. And <laughs> And ask and not be like, oh, well, dang what they, I know, I, I feel like, I was like, I don't even have to tell her that. I know that she knows I got her in whatever way that she needs me to get her, you know, or to support her and her journey and what she's doing. And when you said that about forming those authentic relationships, that those are rare because I found in the very beginning, um, because of who and how I am, I had a lot of people. And when I say a lot, it was a lot who would be reaching out and sucking up every single bit mm-hmm. of that creative energy because they know I'm very passionate about helping people. But yet they were they never paid it forward to other people. They weren't even givers to other people. They weren't even, you know, I was like, I know you didn't. You called me and asked me. You said I sat and worked through a whole client product creation with you for you <laughs> and your client. And then I have specific knowledge of someone else called and asked you a question that I thought was in our same tribe. You know what I mean? I thought we were in the oh, same tribe mm-hmm. and you're going to say, Oh yeah, that's going to cost you X amount. What? I thought that was a question. Now I believe in people getting paid for their gifts and talents. That's not even what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having that relationship with, okay, wait, I'm just stuck. I just need this right now. <laughs> Yeah. And I need some help right now to work this out. And and when so I actually again that disappearing space, I said I withdrew withdrew to the point where no one had access to me. Yeah. And I said I'm not gonna uh-uh, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not going to um, share. I said because you know what? People, and I started talking to myself. People just want to take advantage of it. and all of that crazy talk until I had to do some work. Need is a quick another perspective because oftentimes you'll have a puzzle in front of you have all the pieces but not even be aware of it yeah so it's like oh i just need to turn this this way and then it fits you know what i mean and that's not going to cost you anything that took you two minutes because you're gifted and talented in that area and i believe that in doing those types of things that are very small to you really will then make room for you the bible tells us that you know your gifts and talents will make room for you you better you better say that you better say Everything it's is fun for me. Well, right. and everything isn't about a fee. You know what I mean? Like no. being charged for it. Now, of course, obviously get paid for what you do. You can't keep giving away services for free. But you talking about somebody in your tribe and they just have a quick question, you're like, Oh girl, you figure that out. You don't even need to look at it or listen to the whole conversation. It's like yeah. turn it the other way and then move it on the left side. And then the people yeah. will puzzle. It's like, come on, you're gonna charge for that. But yeah. So I started with, I started withdrawing from those groups. And then my other thing, what I used to get, I don't know if you got them. We don't went all kinds of directions, but that's okay. It don't matter. Cause <laughs> it's all, that's what a conscious conversation is really about. Cause this is the realness of, I start getting a lot of invitations to be accountability partners hmm. from people that I didn't have a relationship with. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
If I got a relationship with you, then okay, I'm your natural. If, like I said, I have expectations of my friends. Exactly. Of course, we okay. I'm a, your accountability partner. But here's the here's again. I would have a coaching program and say, hey, I'm going to do a six week program on this. And this is when I was still just kind of starting out, you know, and crickets. They wouldn't even whatever. And so this program is exactly what they said they needed. It wasn't even expensive at that time because I used to I just used to price, you know, not even looking at what the gifts and the talents was. I was like, okay, I just offer it for that. And you know that they wouldn't buy a $50, $100 program, but yet they're like, oh no, I'm good. And then turn around and like, oh, I need your help. And then, no, I need your help. But you know what would tick me to the law? Again, this is where God said, I had to, I had to get clear. Don't get mad, get clear. They would then tell me that they enrolled in this guru's course for five thousand dollars to for six weeks who's gonna make them the expert in blah 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 okay and how that person like they just they had to do that and they wouldn't even buy my fifty dollar course which did that and then some because now they're calling me on how to execute this guru's program wow. i'm like you well, get out of funny here because that's one of the things that I asked you about. When we, one of our initial conversations, like when we relaunched my brand and been very serious about, you know, what I put out and, you know, me being, you know, been taken as a credible source and a speaker and an author and all those things. I was like, how do you deal with, like, I mean, some stuff I'm not even asking you to pay for. I just want you to share the post. Right. Yeah. Just share the post because your network is in my network. Like, I mean, you're going to reach people I'm not going to reach. It's real simple. Press the share button. <laughs> I didn't ask you to pay for nothing. Like, okay, clearly I have my book, you know, um, which I obviously just I was telling you about. I just did the second edition too, and it's got a new facelift and things like that, which is available now. Yay. And then I, I'm actually putting out my video today, my launch video, yes. uh, merchandise. You know, who you better send it so I can share. Yes. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna see. Like, we did like a soft lunch. My husband and I, and text who we thought were like close friends and family. You know, to just so we can work out the kinks in the back office and just get familiar with the systems and things like that. Girl, let me tell you, some people didn't even reply. It's like, see it? I'm not talking about distant people. I'm talking about people right up on us for the soft launch. Like, Mm. no, that you see the, it's almost like you didn't even send it. You're not going to say anything, a thumbs up it or nothing, heart it, nothing. It's like, (laughs) it's it's, it's just like what you're describing. But then in the next text message chain, they're asking you to do something, do this or want something, you know? So that's one of the things I am just learning to adjust to and take stride because I really do authentically, authentically try to support people. Even if it's just sharing a post, I get it that everybody doesn't have money all the time for all these things that keep popping up because everybody's doing something, you know, and that's a great thing, but you don't always have financial stuff, but but share the post, tell somebody about it. Tell somebody. Do a testimonial. And I don't have some people. A testimonial. Oh my God, don't get me started. (laughs) Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That could take us to a whole nother. And I'm sitting there going, okay, as we talk about from the disappearing woman to the whatever else, to me, this is really everything we shared was actually the totality of the 361. Um, Where we start, (laughs) where we disappear, whether we reconnect and refine, where we reevaluate, where we redefine, and then how we show up. Mm -hmm. And so, that's what the the what I think about the the totality of our conversation. Like you said, we went all three sixty. I said, yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what ends up happening right now. Imagine if we wanted to limit ourselves. Can't do it. Won't do it. Yes. Not happening. Yes, because there's parts of this that it's going to be going to speak to different people. Absolutely. And here, I, what the beauty of this. And reason why that I framed walking through glass, the podcast this way, I said, I want conscious conversations. What are the conversations that we need to be having as women that we tend to don't have, or we whisper in somebody's ear instead of just really putting it out there. And so only one person or two people might know, but really what the tribe needs to hear. Hmm. And so when I think about, you know, some tribal rules in supporting your sisters yeah. <laughs> in the sisterhood. When I think about that is that number one, the very first thing that you have to do if you truly honestly want to support your sister is get yourself right. Mm-hmm. 
because it starts with you. Mm -hmm. You are the primary member of the tribe. And if every woman said that to herself, I am the primary woman of the tribe who needs to be right. That means that you have a dynamic powerhouse of a tribe. And so that means everyone's busy working on the best version of themselves. Now they have something great to offer the group. Because if you are coming in broken and fragmented, then, you know, what are you really going to add? I'm not saying that you don't have highs and lows. I'm saying that if you're always coming hungry to dinner, Ooh. but yet you never actually bring a side dish or a piece of meat. Honey, a piece of bread. That's the thing. A piece of bread. But honey, just bring the wine. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, you want to be my friend, bring the wine. It. But no, it's 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 that and so i one of the expectations that i have for people and i'm talking about my inner circle tribe i said i believe in the multiplier effect that you got to come here whole because mm -hmm. one times one gives you one and that's what's going to make us one powerful sisterhood absolutely. and one powerful tribe if you bring in a fraction that's going to dilute us absolutely all day every day and the thing is we were talking about the disappearing woman and in my first podcast i gave them solutions or gave solutions to you know losing yourself and the first thing i say is to know who you are Mm. Oh my it's goodness. the first step you got to know who you are there's no way you can reappear right represent yourself <laughs> if you don't know who you are you know it's like yeah. that's essential to the process you know your personal process and the journey with others in your sisterhood you know and then you you went back to again which was really number two for me participating in activities that you enjoy that's being back in the sisterhood that's showing back up that's being present but as your whole self unbroken because you want to work yep. mm -hmm. and and i want to clarify for all of our listeners and all of them out there when i'm talking about being whole I'm not saying perfect. Oh, no, that doesn't exist at all. I'm saying whole and clarity and understanding who you are because I can't cheer you on. Meaning I'm speaking from a personal if I don't even love myself enough. So how am I really going to love somebody yeah. else authentically? Yeah. How am I going to give myself to somebody authentically if I'm always feeling like I'm in need? Because what happens is they'll cheer you on and every cheer that they give you, um, they, they further disintegrate within themselves. Yes. Yes. And that dilutes the tribe. And that's not, I'm not walking in my purpose to make you feel bad or make you feel more pain. That's why people say, oh, you doing the most. Well, honey, how about you're not doing enough? Yeah, sure. I'm extra. They call <laughs> Yeah, call me me y'all so extra. Yeah, we we pre we pretty much. Yeah. Okay, then y'all then y'all my yeah. people because I get them, you're so extra and oh my god and you're always so. I said I'm just me and I said I love me and if you do that's a bonus. Right. Hello. So I'm good. Yeah. And they just look and I said so I'm good. You girl, you so extra. Okay, thank you. I said because why why be mediocre when I can be extraordinary? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> to be. He created the so That's it. All right, because you know we can talk for eighty thousand hours. What other? Let's wrap. Let's let's because exactly. you know we're gonna have to come back and give us more. Okay. So and wrapping all of this as we talk about really what we talked about was the three sixty one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and how she can disappear, reappear, and it's the power in which she actively and intentionally seeks opportunities to get repair, heal, restructure, reset. That's part of it. So you are the expert in this. Ms. Des 360. <laughs> so listen, I'm going to go through these steps really fast and I expound upon them in the original podcast. But here's what I have. You know, again, you know, you've lost yourself. But the good news is there's always a way to find yourself or represent yourself. And so the first step is to know who you are authentically. We've given so many examples of this today that, oh, my God, you could just almost replay this podcast several times and take some more notes. OK, <laughs> um, number two was to participate in activities that you enjoy. Sometimes we lose ourselves because we isolate ourselves. So getting back out there and just kind of figuring out, like, I mean, there was a time I didn't know what I even enjoyed doing. So I had to start doing stuff so I could figure out, no, I really don't like that. Or this is fun. I love doing this. So just get back out there, participate in the activities that you will enjoy and then find a way to give back. Now, I know this sounds crazy when you have you feel like you have nothing. What do you give? Well, time and service always cheers up the spirit because that's who we are created to be to serve. Um, Jesus was a servant, you know, and so. 
um, when you're talking about giving back, sometimes there is someone there that you can pour into. And while you're pouring into them, you're being strengthened, you know, and that's the thing about your testimony. So you're giving back, say you're in a shelter, you meet a woman and she's going through something you're going through and you find yourself giving her words of encouragement. So while you're encouraging them, you're yet encouraging yourself. So find ways to give back. Um, stay connected with friends and family. This goes back to the whole isolation piece. That is a detriment to what's remaining of you. Okay. I know you are disappearing, which means that you probably have some parts you left. That means if you want to keep those remaining parts, you may want to stay connected because the thing about friends and family, the true friends and family is that they'll keep you grounded. Not only will they support you, but they'll let you know when you're off track is when we start to isolate and hide that people can't like check us basically because we don't want to be checked. Right. So we disconnect. So get back connected. Um, the other thing is to practice self-care. Self-care. I did a podcast on that one, too. If you subscribe and, and go follow the page and all that good stuff, you will see that one. But self-care looks different to different people. For some people, it means just taking a nap every day because you need a nap to be functional. For others, it means to go get a mani and a pedi. For others, it means to go get therapy, not because something is wrong, but because it's preventative and you don't want anything to be wrong. So it just it looks different to look to different people. And then, of course, be you. What does that mean? That means that after you've taken all of the five steps above, you should have figured out who your core friends and family are, who your support systems are, the things that you like to do. You've put the pieces of the puzzle back together. Now be you. And then finally, speak up. Speak up also means to show up. That means you no longer have to be in a space or in a room and not speak up. You no longer have to be in a room and not have anything to contribute to the conversation or, you know, sit there with a mask on. So the last one of the seven step was to speak up and to show up. And so that's how we get back on track. That's how we no longer disappear, but we start to reappear. And then the, the thing that I would like to add is then share this with a sister who you know is disappearing. You I. That's you can right. see her disappearing. You know she's disappearing. Something is off, even if you don't know what it is. You don't have to ask her her business. Honey, just send her this podcast link and be like, girl, I heard this good podcast. I know, that's right. <laughs> and, to her, share it. And, and that's that part, that share. It's like, I have so many people call me, um, women particularly, and I actually had a breakfast with someone that they go, do you mind if I ask you? And I'm like, no, you know, if I'm sitting there talking to you and I have an answer or solution, I'm not going to say, okay, go book some time. Right. And, you know, and I have a relationship with you. Now, I do, now, let me, I do say that to some folks because when my spirit says to say it, it comes out. Otherwise, I'm good. And my thing is, is just share, but I tell people, listen, I have a podcast. I said, I do a daily dose of vitamin Dr. D every morning, Monday through Friday. Wow. And they're 15, 20 minutes. And it's really a daily dose of vitamin Dr. D. I said, why? Because everybody needs a little more sunshine in their life. Yeah. And vitamin D helps you process sunlight. Love it. And so I said, um, and I will have people go, Dina, I wish I could carry you in my back pocket. I am. I got a podcast. Right. Go what are you talking to? about? Oh, my God. And I'm like, and I'll go, hey, just to subscribe. Go listen to an episode. Go check it out. And so I got to the point. I had to get over it because I thought about I was doing the podcast because it's my catharsis. It's my. So the daily dose of vitamin Dr. D, Monday through Friday, and my conscious conversations, which is what our longer discussions about, usually drop on Sundays. And I said, so I used to say, well, who are you doing this for? When I realized that those morning 15 minutes were, were my out, my verbal meditations. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and discussion. So I said, if they listen, they too. If they don't, that's cool too. And so now when people ask me, I say, here, go listen to the podcast. I bet you such and such episode will help you because what you're asking me about, I'm going to give you a quick answer. But if you want more of this yumminess, go listen to the podcast. Yeah, it's like you're asking me questions or advice about something I've done a whole podcast on for 45 minutes. Yes. So go get your life. Go get your help. Go get you some daily dose of vitamin I Dr. D that. and some DS360. Yes, okay. It. So, <laughs> so it is. Well, it has been more than a pleasure, more than an honor, beyond my wildest dreams and expectations, um, as I knew that it would be. Oh, <laughs> is boy. that is that because your knowledge, your wisdom, and your wit, but your passion for people is what truly, I think, aligns our purpose. And the reason I founded the Lead Her Shift movement was to shift the way we think about ourselves as women and how we develop and respond as leaders. 
with the key piece of we have to lead ourselves before we are even equipped to lead others. And so that's that's everything that I do, putting it on everything that I love. And one of my new, um, not, it's not new, but what I'm revealing and unveiling in the next 30 days is the Lead Her Shift Institute. And the Lead Her Shift Institute is a platform. It's an LMS system, a learning management system where you can go and take and find courses to help you process in these various areas. But here's where I tell you that I'm truly my sister's biggest cheerleader and keeper is that I'm collaborating with other entrepreneurial women. If you have a course and you want to host it on the platform, you can and sell your course and keep your money. I mean, I love it. I love it. it's kind of becoming the, 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 um, what is it? Not the Craigslist, but they used to have a little ask, um, whoever, um, to go find services, whatever else, things like that. It will go a place where women can go because every vendor is vetted on that mm-hmm. site. Is your stuff authentic? Is it real? Is it really, you know, empowering? What you charge, what you charge, because that's not really my my thing. But do are you are you really delivering? Right. right. And so that's what I'm working on. And this whole movement, I keep saying that it's not just a movement, it's a mindset. Mm-hmm. And that all of it is intertwined. And I am so happy, honored, and proud that you are part of my dash and that I've connected with you. And I love what you said is that, you know, and I'm going to take you to another level. This is just the beginning. Yeah. To something that is going to, and we don't even know the fullness thereof, is, but I know it's mind blowing oh, yeah. because oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know the extent of it. So that's why I'm just like, I just know it is so juicy and so yummy and it's so purposeful and it's totally in alignment of what God has called us to do with our and individual. I'm excited, about it. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to know you. I am grateful that you were obedient and sent that inbox message. Um, because literally just the tidbits that you share, just your energy and just seeing another, uh, you know, black woman doing her thing is so empowering for me. It's like, I can do this. This is what I tell myself, you know, and it's like, mm-hmm. you, happen you, and you know, you can do it because guess what? The motivator needs someone to motivate them too. Don't think hey, you better wake say up that. feeling great and want to give you a daily dose of Dr. D. That doesn't happen every day. <laughs> she doesn't feel like that every day, but you know, no. <laughs> I'll be telling my it's for me because I tell people look I need this yeah. I said you better talk it out they say walk it out you better talk it out so I have these conversations so I always get the question and um well how do you do this I said I'm intentional and this is what I say to me I said because self-talk is the oh most powerful what you say to yourself I ask people all the time So I had to start saying this to myself, as you've listened to us say this to you, as you now have the opportunity to share all of this amazingness with those individuals that you know need to hear this. And if you can hear the sound of our voices, then you have a responsibility to share this with another woman, or even another man, maybe he'll learn something extra, but particularly with another woman so that she too understands that she doesn't have to walk through the Mm -hmm. glass by herself. We are all on the same journey, but we may take different paths. And so with that, um, I'm, I'm, cause I could go, I'm gonna wrap that up. Cause we can, we got to say something for you for later. Des, is there anything else you want to leave with them before we say bye-bye? That's see you later. Yeah, Catch look, us I'm going to keep it quick. One. You can follow me at, um, on all social media platforms at Des 360. That's D E Z and 360 spelled out. Um, again, follow, subscribe. And like, I like to say on my podcast, don't be selfish. Share this with your friends and family. That's it. Dina, I'm good. This has been great. I appreciate you. I thank you. And I will continue to pray for you that you, you know, your path may be blessed and your walk may be enlarged and you know, everything that you touch, it will be successful. And so thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. And I don't take it lightly. Oh, and, and ditto, ditto, ditto. 
And again, if you want to connect, actually, I don't understand why you wouldn't want to connect. Um, you can follow me at Twitter and Instagram at, at Dr. Dina Speaks, D R D E E N A S P E A K S. Yes, uh, Walking Through Glass, the podcast has its own Instagram as well. And the leadership movement does too. But if you really want to truly get some of those good nuggets that I post like each and every day, you definitely want to follow me at Dr. Dina Speaks. And Walking Through Glass, the podcast is available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, our host pod being Google Music Play, and soon to be on iHeartRadio. Radio. And so I appreciate you. Thank you so very much for listening. And until next time, be great. Thank you. Bye bye.